welcome to Wellness Live. My name is Dr. Olivia Moses, and this broadcast is brought to you by Loma Linda University Health's Living Whole Wellness Program. We are so excited to have you join us today. As you can see, we're not in our regular studio. We are um, doing our COVID-19 version of our Wellness Live broadcast. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we have a very interesting topic for you today. So if I asked you, how many of you have ever had physical pain before? I would suspect that a lot of you would raise your hand and say, yes, I have definitely had physical pain before. So because this is so common, I wanted to have a very special guest right here from Loma Linda's campus come and talk to us about talk to us today about neuropathic therapy. So Dr. Mark Vassell is the clinical director of the Neuropathic Therapy Center here at Loma Linda University Health. And he has been here at Loma Linda for nine years. So he is the perfect person to talk to us about this very important topic that affects many, many people. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Ba Dr. Mark Vassell. Thank you, Olivia. It's good, great to be here. Yeah, so um, I, I just am passionate about um, uh, pain and getting rid of it. And um, I have uh, many of my colleagues that I've had the privilege of being here with at Loma Linda is, feels the same way. Um, and there's been two, two separate things that have been on my heart that I was hoping to share with uh, perhaps a pain sufferer or somebody that knows a pain sufferer. So the, the first is Loma Linda is, um, is uh, known for lifestyle and lifestyle advocacy for the treatment of uh, diseases and, and pain and uh, long lifestyle, you know, the blue zone. And uh, I, I thought that maybe I could share a little bit as far as um, what a better lifestyle would do for chronic neuropathic and so, or for just neuropathic pain. And then also, um, a lot of my patients want to take that whole person treatment to the next level. They want to say, well, when can I do dietary supplements? Or when can I do uh, some other type of uh, holistic medicine that has less evidence, but, you know, it's something I want to try. And so I thought I'd just maybe discuss some guidelines I give my patients and so it's not, it's lifestyle, but then I thought I'd also answer that other question. Um, you know, what about alternative therapies uh, that sort of bring in whole person care? And so anyway, that's, I was excited to have this opportunity. So anyway, I have a, a slideshow that um, I like to share here and we'll, we can kind of help navigate through. And um, let me just uh, share my screen here. And um, let's see. All right. All right. And then I'm going to swap. Okay. All right. So, uh, treating neuropathic pain with whole person care. And so I have some objectives, and um, I won't bore you too much with the objectives, but uh, these objectives sort of were. Hopefully, we'll be able to answer those in the, in the, in the time that we have. So, um, all right. Uh, with the objectives here, we're, we want to look first at lifestyle pain. And with one of the more interesting studies is, is it has to do with people with neuropathy, and that is people with chronic pain in their feet, in their hands. And these individuals um, many times have trouble finding a, a treatment to help out, reduce their pain. And so um, there is some lifestyle uh, research that indicates that you can reduce your pain uh, with, with um, things like uh, a better diet. Um, intervention, um, there was in one study, 34 volunteers that had diabetic neuropathy uh, completed um, uh, a study and 17 were in the actual treatment arm. So they received um, dietary counseling. They, they journaled their um, what they ate. Uh, they were count, they were uh, helped with a low-fat, plant-based diet, and they had a certain pain questionnaire that they did before and after 
and the he had a control group and there the people that had a better diet their uh, pain went down uh, significantly uh, as a result of um, being on a low fat plant-based diet so uh, that's exciting and I like lifestyle uh, intervention it's something that anybody can do um, and uh, you know some counseling can help but you can do it right from your home you don't have to go somewhere to receive a certain treatment now interesting enough uh, sleeping uh, is a um, is something that helps out with uh, neuropathic uh, pain as well so if you're having trouble sleeping at night it, it might be worth it to figure out why that is and how you can improve your sleep habits um, in one specific study with people that were struggling with their sleep they had something called obstructive sleep apnea they did a, a a uh, pre-test involving a nerve, nerve testing, and then they gave them a treatment for their sleep apnea. And then they retested a nerve afterwards uh, that they, after they had been treated for their sleep apnea. And so they were sleeping better, they had better oxygenation in their, their brain and their nerves. And it turned out that their nerves were, were better, they were faster conducting the electricity faster. And so that's, that was exciting. The, um, there are other lifestyle treatments, and uh, Olivia, this is interesting. Um, I bet you, or maybe maybe you didn't know, but laughter uh, has actually been shown to relieve chronic pain. And uh, we have some uh, uh, excellent researchers involving laughter here on uh, on this campus. I, I'm privileged to work closely with Dr. Burke, and um, he, he's pioneered uh, the research with laughter. And um, and there are other researchers here that I've, I've noted that uh, show that indeed. Uh, when you laugh, um, it uh, decreases your uh, your pain perceptions. And uh, they uh, did this one study with laughter involving 36 uh, elderly people in a nursing home. And uh, it was shown that they had decreased pain and increased perception of loneliness. It was a clever study, and, and uh, I thought I'd bring that in. Exercise uh, is not surprising. It um, is uh, showing promise. Um, and actually, I like to see it uh, research more in terms of chronic pain. Uh, and sunlight, um, actually, if you have, are vitamin D deficient, so sunlight helps uh, your body produce uh, vitamin D and you don't spend the time out in the sun, it can actually um, uh, be a comorbidity. It's something that is present with vitamin D deficiency is present uh, with people that have uh, chronic pain. So um, it's uh, interesting that, that even, even the basics, so some of these lifestyle areas, if you're struggling with chronic pain, but you're also short on some of these uh, uh, areas in your life, uh, think about sleep, think about laughter, think about exercise and sunlight and, and, and your diet. And, you know, does that, is there, are there areas, very simple uh, changes you can make to help out with your pain. Um, now, there's vascular strategies, and this is a little on the... Uh, you know, a little more complex, um, but it's what we deal with here at the Neuropathic Center Therapy Center. So we work with our patients and have for years uh, bringing circulation back into their nerves when they have had an event where circulation is being kept out of a nerve. And it, there's kind of this relationship where once circulation leaves the nerve, there's adjustments made in the physiology and research that indicates that 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 all of a sudden it becomes more difficult to push blood flow. It almost becomes resistant to blood flow going back into the nerve. Um, things that would seem like a massage or, or, or even a, a aerobic exercise doesn't seem to bring the circulation back in. And that is neuropathic pain or neuropathic symptoms. And we developed a treatment to help sort of funnel it in, push it in. And um, that treatment is called intraneural facilitation. We're excited to have this here. Uh, anyway, the, with the intraneural facilitation, um, it involves several holds and positions. Um, this first hold, they kind of pull this foot over. Uh, and when you pull the foot over, um, it uh, naturally biases circulation into the nerve more consistently from the artery. Um, it, there's a dual chamber system that's involved with your whole nerve vascular complex and, and uh, so I'll try not to get too technical here but um, as sort of the outer chamber is pressurized it's almost like dumping oil in your car that you're by pulling that foot over um, you, you can even feel pressure sometimes in your head if you have a uh, if you're sensitive there but at any rate um, 
the stretching out of the second leg here is really the treatment leg and the pressurized flow will go into the stretch sciatic nerve. And if you had sciatic nerve pain, this would be uh, a starting place to treat. And we have a specific uh, method, but anyway, there's a vascular uh, strategies uh, that you can develop for nerves that have pain that you just, they just don't have the blood flow in them. And they have little sensors that start sprouting off pain. Um, so anyway, those are, that's kind of the lifestyle portion um, of, uh, of the uh, uh, discussion here that I had planned. Um, Olivia, do, would there be any questions or anything that? Um, yes. Actually, we have some questions going in, okay. but it's so funny. I have a bunch of questions of my okay. own, so, you know, so I'm going to start with a couple of questions that I have, and then we'll get to the questions coming in. And that's a really good point. For our audience out there, you can actually ask questions right now in the comment section if you're watching us live to Dr. Bissell right now. So why don't you go ahead and type those in while I'm asking um, some of my questions. So, um, you know, what we see a lot of times in the clinical world and you as a, you know, physical therapist doing clinical work, we see a lot of people looking at physical therapy as it's just muscles and bones and tendons and that type of thing, and not looking at maybe the person as a whole person, looking at sleep, looking at nutrition. So could you share with us, how did you come up with more of a broader kind of perspective on your clinical work? What was that journey like for you to actually see that all of these things actually affect, you know, oh. your, your, your clinical work? Oh, wow. Well, um, so this, this is, I'll, I'll give, I'll try the best to summarize it. Um, I have uh, two special needs boys and I have been uh, passionate to try to figure out some way to help them. Um, my oldest son has a seizure disorder. My youngest uh, son um, uh, has a, a disability as well. And, and so um, I wanted to see if there's something you can do uh, to intervene in, in these uh, particular, in this particular way. And inflammation was something that I knew was uh, part of both of their problems. and. I also knew that inflammation was a part of nerve-related issues as well. So um, I started looking at, and I kind of put those pieces together, uh, and I looked at alternative methods and, and therapies. And my actually, my mother-in-law had uh, um, nerve problems, and, and it's called peripheral neuropathy. And I started using some alternative uh, methods that I was hoping to maybe use with my sons to help them uh, battle through some of their, their uh, challenges. And I discovered that by doing simple holes positions, um, I could um, sort of, I could help out with her pain in her leg, but it wasn't anything like exercise. It wasn't, uh, uh, you know, something like uh, doing jumping jacks or, or uh, so that got me to thinking, you know, I'm really influencing um, just by doing simple holes and positions. I'm actually figuring out a way to bring circulation into the circulation of the nerves. And then I got to thinking, you know, as a physical therapist, maybe much of what I did anyway with exercise and stuff really was in some indirect way, not just helping heal muscles, but bring circulation to nerves as well. So that's what, that's my. Right, journey. so th it makes so much sense that you have a passion for this because you did it for your family and you saw results. Yes. yes. Yeah, oh, that's fantastic. Yes. So, I'm going to go to questions now. The first question we have that came in is, how long do the effects of last, laughter last in helping you with pain? You know, and, and that's a very good question. Um, and uh, there's, there's uh, some variables with that. But as far as the effects of laughter are concerned, um, you know, it's, it's um, what they're showing with laughter is that it decreases cytokine production and, and, and improves the, the circulation. Um, and so with, with laughter, what we're seeing in, in this one pain study, um, it, it showed that with, with the, the people were able to score that it was higher. So, so I, guess, I guess the short version is, is that it's longer than you think. I mean, but it needs to be consistent. You know, it's not just, just a one-time event and then it's gonna last me for, forever uh, as, and then I'll have no more pain. Uh, you know, it, it, needs, it needs to be almost a lifestyle. And, and this one study was a lifestyle that they really intervened with the individuals and they got the, got the scoring improvement. So there was a lasting result from it, but it needs to be uh, something that, that's done maybe on a daily basis um, at, a, at a routine time and, and, uh, 
and, and then maybe uh, throughout your day, you know, and so like any treatment. I, I honestly love the idea of you or another clinician giving me, uh, you know, my to do's after I leave your office. And the number one thing is to laugh more. I love it. Yeah. I just love it. Um, yeah. So here we have another question that has come in is that I've been told once a nerve is damaged or dead, it can't regenerate. Is that true? So um, there's, there, that's a very good question. Um, and actually, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a couple experiences. One was we had a patient um, who had severe nerve damage, so much so that it was almost considered dead. Um, and that nerve has continued to heal four years later. So, um, you know, there's the nerves have tremendous recuperative capabilities. There can be, there can be a terminal nerve, uh, apraxia death that can occur. I haven't seen it maybe once in, in um, and I've been doing this since 2007. Um, so we've seen nerve regeneration, both motor and sensory. Uh, motor is a little more difficult if there's, for instance, um, because it's more, more involved from a, you know, the end plate has to regenerate and then the motor nerve has to heal and, and there has to be plastic changes and different things involved. But, um, you know, we, we see, we're confident when a patient comes in that uh, neural regeneration can take place. The trick here though is you need to bring circulation around the nerve and that's really the most critical factor. Okay, great. We're having questions just, they're just coming through. So I'm going to have to cut it off. Uh, we could just make this the rest of our, our uh, session. Yeah, our, our rest of our, our thing. So sure. um, what I'm going to do, I'll ask one more question that just came through, and then we'll get to the second half of your presentation. So the next one is, how do I find a physical therapist um, that does this type of care? So um, if, if we're talking about... Um, Nerve, nerve for nerve pain. Okay, so that's why I'm assuming what she means by this type of care is for nerve pain. I, so, I okay, go ahead. Uh, no, that's that's right. So uh, our particular treatment is is a novel treatment, and we're re in the middle of researching. We're going we're in the middle of training. So this intranerve facilitation and our bringing circulation into the nerve is just here at Loma Linda, and uh, but we're excited to train. We want to train, but we wanted to have a pro something that we know that hey this is what you do and these are your results and not just you know we're not sure but you know we've seen some good results so you know but we're excited and we're about ready with the research and stuff to move forward other therapists um uh that there are therapists that work with nerve related injuries and um the really i think the first person to talk to is your physician you know and he's fairly well networked um, especially in in the lowland area but anywhere um and, and i'm sure that he has uh, providers, physical therapy providers that had good success with nerve injuries. And so, you know, that, that might be the first place to start is with your, uh, your family practice position. Okay, great. And so before we get to your second half, I want to also make sure that we are all on the same page because I think all of us have not necessarily heard, you called it INF, correct? I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. So right. it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's called intraneural facilitation. Okay. And, and what, um, what is the kind of basic definition of that? So uh, it's a systematic way of reinstituting circulation into nerves. So I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, our patients um, have tingling and numbness in their feet and with diabetes and different things. It's, it's becoming more common and they can have it for a variety of reasons, diabetes, or it can be auto, um, autoimmune. So with a high degree, about 80 to 90% of the time, a patient comes into our clinic for our first session, we're able to reduce the numbness and tingling significantly in their foot using this particular method. And so, and that's exciting, and, and um, um, but it involves um, uh, the holds I previewed that I just, uh, and, and, and it involves kind of a, a system, a method of doing it. And there's a lot of challenges once you get circulation into the skin, you know, you have to kind of coax it through the system and, and, and so forth. So, but anyway, that's, that whole system is called internal facilitation. Okay, no, that's great. You had a slide and you had it explained. I just want to make sure that all of us are on the same page sure. as we go to the second half. Yeah. So great. So why don't we go to the second half of your presentation now? Okay, all right. All right, let's get it. Okay. All right. Um, can you see it okay? Is it, uh, or do I need to do screen sharing? I probably need to do screen sharing, huh? 
Okay. All right. Now, so the treatment of, of neuropathic pain, and I have pain, and um, it's a difficult, um, with, with pain, it's difficult to treat for a variety of reasons. One is there could be a lot of causes, and sometimes there's multiple causes for, for your pain. So um, it, the question I'd like to answer here is, um, what, where do I go now? And I think I had that question or question said, I'm not, I did. Um, where do I go now uh, when I have nerve pain? And you know, what, what, how can I best navigate the medical landscape for nerve pain? And so, um, you know you have nerve pain with these symptoms. And so some are painful, some are not painful. And they're listed here, uh, burning electric, knife-like, throbbing. Those are the painful ones. Um, now you could have, um, tissue pain that the nerves are reporting, but most of the time with these symptoms right here, the nerve itself has been damaged or, or in some way. Um, certainly with the non-painful neuropathic symptoms, the numbness, tingling, uh, those are uh, almost always, uh, almost always going to be uh, neuropathic in, in origin. In other words, the nerve itself is not getting circulation. The axon, which is this, um, which is the well, the conductive part of the nerve um, is, is not getting circulation or it's been stretched or, or, or there's pressure on it. Um, okay, so examples of disorders with neuropathic pain, I, I've listed some here and you have some that it could be uh, even the fact that I have too much uh, sugar in my bloodstream can actually create a diabetic nerve pain or diabetic symptoms. Uh, and that's the more, one of the more common ones. We can have the, our immune system can attack uh, nerves like in multiple sclerosis. Um, and you can have uh, like a trauma, like with sciatic nerve pain that goes down my leg. All those are examples of nerve pain. All right. And so now sometimes I have patients that come into the clinic and say, you know, um, do I see my doctor? I love whole person treatment for my nerve pain. I, I'm not sure about medication. Um, I'm not sure about side effects. Uh, I want to treat myself naturally. Um, so where, where do I go with this? And this actually is becoming more and more um, common, uh, more, more of a common question. Um, so I want to uh, address this. I feel like I'm in a unique perspective to, to address this question. Um, so any person that reduces pain treats the whole person. And I, I just want you to, to uh, embrace this, that, you know, I have pain, I'm taking medication, but, you know, I, I, you know, is it really good for me? It is good for you that you have less pain. And it will impact your, um, uh, it'll impact your moods, it'll impact your inflammation, it'll impact your overall health to not be in pain. So if you have medication and the doctor gives you something, feel, feel free and feel empowered to take it. Now, uh, you know, there, there may be with medications or any side effects, and that's really a conversation you can have with your physician. You know, be transparent. You know, share with them, be open, but, you know, part of the healing process can actually, is actually, you know, I need to take medication to reduce my pain. So, so, you know, it, it's, it's not, there's this sort of divide between, well, there's conventional and then there's uh, holistic, really, um, if we can, if we can uh, reduce your pain, the whole person's going to be, going to be uh, positively affected by that. Okay. Now, that being said, um, there are some examples of, of uh, conventional treatments for neuropathic pain. I've listed here some medications a doctor may give, um, and uh, I, I don't necessarily, uh, I don't think in this form it's necessarily something I need to uh, go over and review each one of these medications. But uh, that's sort of an example of conventional care. Now, conventional therapy is reaching in, uh, in many ways, into more natural ways of healing. For instance, physical therapy, what do we do? We have modalities, we have ultrasound, we have massage, we have um, uh, exercise, and that's all natural and it has holistic sort of properties to it. And, and that's common for a physician to say, hey, I, you have nerve pain, let's go see your physical therapist for that. There are alternative therapies that um, are not as well researched and really they, they don't have 
uh, enough evidence and for a variety of reasons, which is beyond the scope of our discussion. And, and these therapies are sort of what, what people approach me on. And sometimes they get lost in these alternative therapies. And they say, well, you know, I'm taking all these supplements. I have nerve pain. I need to take uh, alpha lipoic acid, vitamin B12. I need to, uh, you know, I'm going to my chiropractor. I'm doing all these different things. And so um, anyway, I have some examples here of some homeopathic treatment types. And um, people do get better with homeopathic treatment types. But the evidence, you know, it's difficult to plug someone in. I have neck pain. So what do we do? Well, we, we can do a specific type of homeopathic treatment. There's just not the evidence. It's difficult. So a lot of times the patient, uh, hopefully with their doctor's blessing, goes to these uh, alternative types of therapies. Okay. So um, I have some recommendations if you are looking to uh, uh, go beyond lifestyle and you want to seek um, whole person treatment of pain. First of all, Consider your doctor, um, uh, your, your physician, an expert in whole person treatment, and he's well connected. And um, so look at him as, as sort of an advisor, somebody that's going to guide you through your process. The next thing is start your neuropathic pain uh, treatment early. So if you, have, um, your, if you have pain, don't wait for months and months and hope it gets better on its own. Um, you, know, you don't want all the systems to start to all of a start to have compensation and then you have a, a, a bigger issue, you know, go in uh, certainly before three months. After three months, uh, your pain is going to be more chronic. Um, follow your doctor and exhaust the conventional options. So want some testing and, and different things to, to uh, help to diagnose your pain if, if it's um, not something that goes away right away. Um, and uh, if you are looking at more holistic options, options that sort of you heard about on TV or friends I've talked about, and there's not as much evidence. Um, and uh, if you want to move to more holistic options, make sure you uh, discuss them with your physician. Um, and if your pain persists beyond conventional options. Okay, that being said, I have chronic pain. I've, I've been through conventional care, and it's not getting better. And I hear this at times. Don't settle. There's a lot, a lot of, uh, sometimes, you know, patients do uh, go into, uh, you know, being their own advocate and have found significant relief being their own advocate. But in a sense, but make sure you keep your doctor aware of where you're looking at as far as homeopathic care. Okay, so um, I'm going to go here to, um, this is where I would start with homeopathic care. And this is where the research is. I have, I want to look at homeopathic care. I would start with food allergies. And I've seen, I think the best research coming out is figure out if you have a food allergy. Celiacs is one in a hundred, but only 11% is being diagnosed. Um, and then there is some controversy on um, food sensitivity or uh, gluten sensitivity, but uh, there's good evidence that there is um, uh, a gluten sensitivity with a lot of uh, patients with pain. Gluten is in wheat. So look at food allergies first. Gut health is a big deal. It's the best. It's been the best research as part of homeopathic care, but also um, you know, look at see at ways to heal your gut. Um, that it would be the next thing I would look at. There are also the circulatory induction techniques, pushing circulation into painful um, previous ischemic areas. I mentioned my treatment uh, or our treatment here at Loma Linda. The, um, there's others, the scramble and acupuncture. So, and, and, and what to consider if you're navigating holistic care, does it have evidence, if it costs a ton, then you need to, you know, way that it may not work because it may not have the evidence you're looking for. Um, are there side effects you don't, I'm going to recommend strongly you don't uh, engage in, in holistic care that has side effects. That should be the strength of holistic care is it should not have side effects. Um, and then uh, see if you can talk to somebody who's benefited from it and does the FMC model resembles, uh, reasonably connect with what is known uh, and taught and in Western medicine. Okay. So that's a lot of information. That's a lot. I just flew, flew through a ton of information. So anyway, um, I'm excited about lifestyle medicate, medicine. Um, hopefully we can empower, uh, you know, uh, someone to, to say, hey, you know, I can trust my physician. And, um, and then we can give a, a few guidelines if, if you need to, or if you're interested in going beyond that for homeopathic care.
Sure. Well, thank you so much. That's a lot of really great information. I also love what you, and I know you flew through it, but we have the information. We got a definite idea. Um, I love what you said about um, it is good to research homeopathic care, look at the evidence that is out there, and take all of that information to your primary care physician or the physician who's caring for you. Because I think that's what a lot of people think that a lot of these homeopathic or functional medicine or natural medicine, they can't talk to their doctor about, you know, oh. and he or she is there to yes. really tell you things. They are the authority on health for you to go in and actually get advice. So yes. I love that that was how you started the, the journey. Yes. Yeah, that's great. So let's go to um, some of these questions. Um, it says, are there resources to do some of the more basic therapies at home? The resources. Um, yes. So, um, uh, again, uh, we're starting with your physician. Um, the basic therapies from a lifestyle perspective, um, I would ask for a referral to a nutritionist, you know, someone to help you. And, and um, you know, if you are in pain, you know, I would first look at glucose levels, have your, make sure your physician knows what J1C is um, and ask for that test if you have not been tested with that because that is a significant cause. It's, it's low hanging fruit. And then um, I would go um, to a nutritionist. You can also consider asking her to, you know, a gluten-free diet is an option that we recommend quite a bit here. Um, you know, there's, uh, that's underdiagnosed with celiac disease. Uh, those, those, that's where I start from a nutritional perspective. Exercises, you can ask your physician to refer you to a physical therapist for uh, exercises as well. Okay. I think this question, I think that answers the question. I think also along with this question, they're also thinking about your INF therapies. And I know you're in a specific research phase of this. So are there any resources that they can do at home yet? Yes. So, um, so yes. Yeah. So first, what, what we would, first of all, we, we do talk to patients that are not in the research protocol, we have a patient that uh, do come to our clinic. Uh, and so um, uh, just, uh, we have a website, uh, it's um, the Neuropathic Therapy Center from Loma Linda. Um, you can call us and then we can set up a Zoom meeting and go from there as far okay. as uh, that's concerned. Great. And the number, if you all are interested, the general number for Loma Linda is 909-558-4000. And then after you get an operator, you can ask for the neuropathic therapy. therapy center. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So another question that we had come through, what are the psycho psychosocial implications of neuropathic pain? Psychosocial, wow. Yeah. So there was, that is, they are, they're immense. Yeah. So there is a um, significant journal that talked about the five domains that, that were impacted with neuropathic pain. And um, it was a very interesting study, but um, it was actually a review of 52 studies, in, in, and um, uh, it was a, a systematic analysis, um, systematic review. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it, it was clear that um, the psychosocial implications are are broad, and uh, there's, there's there's a global impact. It impacts your your sense of well-being, uh, your identity. Um, it, it impacts. Um, moods, limbic system, and obviously that's going to have an impact on, on your ability to function um, uh, in society. Um, it impacts your ability to um, be active, to work. So there's, it's, it's, it's broad in scope. Okay. So just have to piggyback to that question in conclusion, let's say I have a family member or a friend um, that I am supporting um, and they are dealing with chronic pain. What can I do as a support person to um, be there or help that person? What can we do if we're kind of in the community of yeah. a person supporting them? So, so I'm convinced there's enough resources that I think that, you know, much chronic pain is unnecessary. And I think that there's enough resources that, that if you can work with that individual and, uh, you know, work through the conventional channels, it may take you to pain management. Um, if if that's if you haven't worked through those channels, um, looked at lifestyle, uh, that some of the basic lifestyle uh, uh, avenues you can take, um, and then and then at that point, um, 
there's some real research that's going on that's real good research involving gut health. Um, I'm excited about what we have here at Neuropathic Therapy Center. I think that there's more um, resources for you now, and I would encourage you to use them, you know, and, and start in that order. Great, great. Well, thank you so much for your time today yeah. and for being here. And I, I think this was a very not only interesting subject, but also enlightening one based on the questions that we were getting. A lot of people were interested. So thank you for sharing about the clinic and these innovative therapies that you um, are, are exploring right now. So thank you so much, Dr. Bissell. Well, thank you, Olivia, for having me. It's been my pleasure. And also, I want to thank you as our viewer for joining us here today um, at Wellness Live. And I want to invite you to our next session, which is going to be August 26th. And we are going to have a very special guest. Um, he is Dr. J.C. Belliard, and he is from our Institute of Community Partnerships here at Loma Linda University Health. And it's going to be a fantastic conversation. So again, my name is Dr. Olivia Moses, and I want to thank you for joining us. And I, and I hope to see you next time.